And who do they schedule as a homecoming opponent? The Nittany Lions of Penn State, who come off an 18-6 loss to Wisconsin. They had 131 yards of offense, the fewest ever in Joe Paterno's 36 years. Well, I got to step back and look at this whole football team. We didn't, and uh, right now, anything I say, I don't even know what I'm, what I'm really talking about. I've got to step back and take a good look at everything. Right now, the only thing I'd like feel like doing is punching a wall. And I'm angry, and anything I say would be uh, about some player or doing this or doing that would only be out of frustration right now, and wouldn't, I don't think would help anything or anybody. Some rare negative public comments by Joe Paterno. Hi, everybody, and good morning from Iowa City. With Todd Christensen, I'm Steve Levy. He also went on to describe his team as playing like scared rabbits in the first half. As for Paterno and the record, there is a thought that if he doesn't get a win here today... Well, all the nation has been impatient waiting for this, waiting for him to get past Pear Bryant. The plain fact is that there are no gimmies on this schedule. In addition to the first two games that they had, which were extremely difficult against Wisconsin and Miami, take a look at the remaining schedule. No gimmies. Seven bowl teams on this schedule. This is the second most difficult schedule in Division I football, only behind USC. Only one time in Joe Paterno's 36 years has Penn State started 0-3. As for Iowa, they're looking to go uh, have a three-game winning streak for the first time under third-year head coach Kirk Ferentz. Well, a little bit different story in Iowa City. Certainly they're excited about starting 2-0 and, oh, and they put up some tremendous numbers. They shut out their two opponents for seven quarters of the first eight and then take a look at the offensive numbers they put together. See 236 yards per game rushing and of course through the air they've been doing it as well. But again check out the level of competition. Big Ten is much different Steve. Penn State 7-1 all time here in Iowa City. Brian Kenny that one loss was a homecoming game. Khalil Hill and C.J. Jones are back for Iowa. The Hawkeyes winning the toss. And they elect to go on offense first. And we are underway from Kinnick Stadium. It'll be Khalil Hill from the 5 out to the 20. Cutting it upfield. 35, 40 to the 50. 45 down the sideline. One man to beat and he is tripped up at the 12-yard line. Richard Gardner tripped him up. What a start for the Iowa Hawkeyes. A 76-yard kickoff return to open things up by Khalil Hill. Kirk Ferentz has to be very happy with the field goal kicker, Nate Kading. He's hit 11 consecutive field goals. That is a new school record. Here looking to improve it on a 22-yard attempt. Got a piece and does not. It's blocked Sam Crenshaw. Blocked two punts. Has already blocked two punts. Tremendous athlete, number nine. And this is exactly what Joe Pa was talking about. Joe Paterno, some people have to come through and make some plays. Look at how excited that head coach is. <laughs> Third down and 11 now. They had three seconds to snap the ball. They were able to do so. Pass across the middle, complete to Dallas Clark against the Nittany Lions. McCann will throw, nearly batted away, it's Hill. Down to the six-yard line on the inside pass for a good for 18 yards. Second down and goal from the one. Here's Betts, end zone touchdown. Liddell Betts, the touchdown, and with it, he goes over 100 career points, scoring. And the Hawkeyes are on the board. The crowd rising to their feet. Here's Mills rolling right. And he is brought down. Great tackle by Derek Pickens. Robbie Gould on to attempt the field goal. It is up. And it is good from 37. And congratulations to Robbie Gould, the true freshman from Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. The first field goal of his college career. And with it, Penn State on the board. They trail seven to three. Paterno is just 0 and 2 for the fourth time in his 36 years. They started 0 and 3 only once. And that was in 1983. Looking to avoid a second 0 and 3 start here in 2001. McCann on the run, completing the Dallas clock. And Clark 
is down at the 31-yard line, hit from behind by Sean Mayer. First down and 10 after the flag from the 46. McCann is hit as he released, completes to Dallas Clark. More yards oh, after the catch here. Clark flying down the sideline, finally knocked out of the 16-yard line by Bruce. He's out there with Betts. It is Betts, and he's in the end zone for the second time this afternoon. David Bradley is deep in his own end zone, the punt of the way. High snap, and it goes out of the end zone for a safety. A high snap, and Bradley could not hang on to it. And it's a safety. Hurt so much, Joppa said, you've got to have your back in the game in the second half. Dave, is there any good news to report on the Penn State sideline? As that pass is caught, Khalil Hill on the receiving end of a bullet by Kyle. in Iowa City. Joe Paterno looking to win number 323 and tie Paul Bear Bryant for the most wins among major college coaches. Among all college coaches, the leader is Eddie Robinson, who won 408 games and, oh, by the way, went to college right here in Iowa. You look at Joe Paterno, 74 years young. They let the agent a bit on this drive. First and goal from the seven. Here's McCann throwing, and it's caught. Touchdown, Khalil Hill. That pass through three players' arms before Hill was able to catch it for the touchdown. The sun is out in Iowa City, and Benny Sapp is up after administering the big hit. <laughs> Sapp <laughs> showing the emotion, and then... It, he celebrated and took the eight count as well. <laughs> Aramis Harrelson has checked in for Sapp now. Throw right at him. Getting some attention. Should throw Aramis right at him. First and goal. Here's Mills. He's been brilliant on this drive. Throw and a catch. All right, we are with Chris Doyle. Some unusual, unorthodox exercises you use. What do those effects have on the, on the team, Chris, and what advantage does that have? Well, at the University of Iowa, we believe in a very position-specific approach to conditioning. An offensive lineman, he's paid to, uh, to move a guy equal in his size or bigger for 75 plays a game. And we believe in resistive conditioning in order to help improve that effect. Uh, whereas a cornerback, is, is, uh, his job's to backpedal for 75 yards a game. So we believe that we need to train athletes differently according to their position. And Kading, the connecting on the 26-yarder, Penn State had the opportunity to and then we're picked off, and that's how the game finished up. That field goal was the difference. Well, as you pointed out, he has the leg, so here he is once again trying one 47 yards. Last year, between 40 and 49 yards, he was 8 of 11. Snap of the hole just fine, and the field goal is up. And it is good! Wow, what a leg. Kading connecting. That would have been good from about 55. Putting the Hawkeyes up 13. And here come the Nittany Lions from the 43 on first down and 10. Zach Mills with time. Now pressure from the outside. And he's dropped by Bob Sanders. He's coming on the sack. On the blitz, Sanders makes Mills pay. Brian, thank you. David Bradley is on. The punt it away, and it's blocked. Can't get it away. Picked up by Penn State. And in. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. And it's Larry Johnson. That's but I think it's Omar Easy that made the block. See what they do. Uh, they're going to put it on the ground. And they're going to get a good gain out of it. It's Greving again. He's down to the five-yard line. Aaron Greving, who tied an NCAA record by scoring three touchdowns on three consecutive carries against Kent State. 
Picking up some positive yardage. Now that you saw, I thought that was class in the part of Ferrant. Of Ferrant, he takes the headset off. He knows they're not going to try to score. They're content with the game being over. And you see him breathe a sigh of relief, but he's got to feel pretty good about getting an opportunity to beat somebody who he has idolized for so long, being a native of Pittsburgh. And that is it. Kurt Ferentz in Iowa, dating back to last season, they've now won five of their last six games. And it all started with a big win over Penn State and Happy Valley. Here they get the win today. Coming up next, the Accurate College Game Day Scoreboard. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet. Joe Paterno comes up short again today. We'll see you over on ESPN News.